Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we'll be discussing the sacraments of the Catholic Church, and right now we're talking about baptism. Today, the major challenge is to the claim that baptism is needed for salvation. There are nine that I've heard, none of them especially difficult to answer. Objection 1. The baptism of John the Baptist had no power to save, even though in Mark 1, 4, it says, John was in the desert baptizing and preaching the baptism of penance unto remission of sins. Therefore, the phrase, remission of sins, doesn't imply that baptism purifies one of sins in a saving way. Response. The phrase, unto the remission of sins, doesn't mean that John's baptism purifies people of all their sins. Instead, it means that his baptism was aimed towards the remission of sins, namely by preparing people to receive authentic sacramental baptism. Objection 2. Jesus never baptized anyone, so how can baptism save if it doesn't come through him? Response. Once again, the answer is that Jesus did institute the sacrament of baptism and made it effective for saving people by delegating authority to his apostles. In fact, Jesus' relationship to the priest or other baptizer is the same now as it was then. He provides the saving effectiveness of the sacrament in a supernatural way while we go through the required steps. Objection 3. St. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 1.17, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not in wisdom of speech, lest the cross of Christ should be made void. Therefore, baptism isn't required. Response. Nothing about this verse implies that baptism isn't required. It just draws a distinction between baptism and preaching. Indeed, these are two separate facets of the work of saving souls, and St. Paul is not required to baptize if he doesn't see that as his job. Objection 4. Paul says that since there is only one God, there is only one way of salvation, in Romans 3. Therefore, the means of salvation must be the same everywhere and in all times. Therefore, baptism, with its various kinds, not present prior to Jesus, doesn't make sense as a means of salvation. Response. By only one way of salvation, this means that we can only be saved in the one way of through God's grace, all forms of baptism are the same in this regard. God grants his grace through the sacrament, purifying the person being baptized. God is also not forbidden from granting saving grace in other ways. Objection 5. There is no verse in the Bible that states that baptism saves, but there is a verse that says that we are saved by faith apart from works of the law. Response. This is actually false. Whereunto baptism, being of the like form, now saveth you also. 1 Peter 3.21a So, yes, there is a verse in the Bible that states that baptism saves. Objection 6. In Romans 4, Paul says that Abraham was justified by faith before being circumcised. Therefore, we can also be justified by faith before being baptized. Response. In the first place, circumcision was not a sacrament that could save, and baptism is, but putting that aside, it could be argued that Abraham's sincere desire to do God's will, no matter what it was, would have qualified as a baptism of desire, as we discussed a couple episodes ago. In any case, this is not a strong objection. Objection 7. In Acts 10, Cornelius converts and is filled with the Spirit and speaks in tongues before being baptized. This seems to imply that baptism is something that happens after a person is purified. Response. There are numerous verses in the Bible that speak of God granting gifts to whomever he wills and coming to be with tax collectors and sinners, so there's no reason why God shouldn't grant the Holy Spirit and the ability to speak in tongues to someone who hasn't been purified yet. Certainly, the verse doesn't specifically say that he was purified before being baptized. Objection 8. The thief on the cross went to heaven without baptism, according to Jesus. Response. This clearly falls under the baptism of desire. In fact, I would almost call this a proof text for the baptism of desire. Objection 9. Baptism implies that salvation is dependent on the presence of water and someone who knows how to baptize. What if you've got someone out in the desert somewhere who sincerely wants to follow Jesus and would if given the chance? Response. Once again, the existence of the teaching of the baptism of desire makes this objection very weak indeed. 
People who sincerely want to follow Jesus and do whatever God wants them to, but are deprived of the ability to do so, fall under the baptism of desire and can be saved that way. Remember, as Jesus said, Going therefore, teach ye all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Matthew twenty-eight nineteen. Baptism is a precious and wonderful sacrament, and we should be very grateful for it. Next time, what is the Eucharist? What does it look like? And what is it really? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.